Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, John Reese, uh, you probably read while I talk and listen, and you can multitask and, and good. Paradox. Uh, we're on a shore. You might be able to see a paradox out there, two of them. Or here's an example. Uh, first of all, this is true. I'm very, very hard of hearing. Um, and, 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 uh, so, but unusual things. I hear over here that one gal is saying, God, he's really bald. And on this one over here, I hear, he's got crazy hair. And uh, you wouldn't think that both of those could be true. But, um, and I've never seen this guy when they, they point and, and I never get to see him. But, but I'm, I hear that it's true. Yeah, you can have, be bald. And, and anyway, so I'm going to give you a, uh, examples of, of paradoxes where you don't think it could possibly be both ways, but it, it, it's true. And, and, and then another example of where everybody sees something except one guy, um, it's the opposite is true. One guy is, is seeing stuff that you guys probably haven't seen because nobody does aeration. Uh, uh, so, um, I'm hoping you're reading because I got a blast through this. This is an update of a presentation three years ago, and I've learned more, and there's a lot of stuff at the, at the back end. So uh, um, farrowing facility, that truly does have zero odor. Um, and I could tell stories, and I'd love to, but um, I'm excited about this shit, uh, <laughs> truly. Uh, I've seen some amazing things. There's a, a few other people that have experienced going to a manure, uh, hog manure pond, uh, uh, being there, and then for, for several hours, and then going to a restaurant in town. And you know you don't do that because that's all over your clothes, but there was no order. Uh, and, and that's what, what we're all about. So that's our goal. Um, interesting information. I'm not going to read through it, but you can fill that building up 13 times each day with the manure that's produced in the United States. Each day, 13 times. Okay. When you step in dog poop, it ruins your day. And, and if you've ever, it does, it sticks with you and everybody around you is wondering what the hell happened. Um, um, and so urban people can understand this. Rural people, you got you to remember that your neighbors, you ruin their day with odor. Uh, okay, so the, the laws, of it all comes to there. Aerobic treatment is four pages. I'm sorry, anaerobic treatment is four pages. Aerobic treatment is two sentences. That's what you know about it. It's too expensive. It's no longer too expensive. Um, I'm here to represent what I've coined as widespread induced surface exchange, and this is where I have to use my hands. Um, uh, our equipment is floating on a pond. It's got a buoy to keep it suspended. It's got a propeller 18 inches in diameter that's bringing effluent up continuously. It has no choice but to go off to the side because there's more effluent coming up behind it, the stretching on the surface is the phenomena that does the, the surface exchange, so uh, and the aeration. So it's widespread induced surface, surface exchange. I think it's a really wise acronym. And, uh, but it, it's the induced part that makes things happen. So it's the upward flow, which also does a uh, distribution of all that aeration that's happening throughout the pond. We can move sand with this from one edge of the pond to underneath the, the units. So um, there you go, some of the benefits, um, the stories. The previous equipment, I started in this and some of these are examples of what happens. Um, there's big problems. And because of the problems that happen, the farmers finally, after the 20th or 50th time of removing the equipment, they say, bullshit, park it in the fence, I'm done with this crap. And that's a history of why you don't see it. I've tried to make improvements on my equipment and, um, and it, the two main problems, it, it, it wraps on the propellers and it's bulky, it's heavy. You need equipment to put it on, take it off. My equipment 
is less than 100 pounds and I'm 64 and I'm still moving them by hand, uh, putting them on off. That's uh, upward flow. We are moving 20 to 30,000 gallons per minute, which pump manufacturers would say that's impossible. But, but we have no head. There's zero head. There's no confinement. And that gravity pushing it out while, while the propellers are bringing it up, give it no choice but to move it off to the side. It's, it's actually um, very effective. We're four to 10 times uh, more efficient per watt of energy used compared to blowers. And that, my friends, is the difference of being able to farmers doing it, affording it uh, uh, to do it, and and uh, and communities, the only people able to afford it. So it works year round. I don't sell bacteria. Nature provides it, and even in cold weather, it it uh, bacteria. We like to think that it's munching away on that stuff. Okay. Um, I do have to back up that last side talks about uh, irrigation. That's what I'm all about. My purpose in life is, is now to make it a more automated method for getting those uh, farmers to uh, be allowed to get it to their crops. And, and also uh, fertigation is putting it on the growing crops. And we can do that because the aeration uh, does gets rid of quite a bit of uh, uh, the odor and the solids are converted into something that's soluble and that can go through nozzles. Um, so it, it, it's a very practical uh, alternative. So, uh, and, and one of the things I like to compare this to is uh, um, one, you know, there's two methods of decomposition. One's anaerobic, uh, another's aerobic. Uh, anaerobic, since I was a kid in the 70s, it's been the sexy sister and uh, the aerobic is the practical one and 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 uh, so that's probably not politically correct to say sexy so i'll say crazy instead <laughs> um what i think i've learned and and actually i i'd, I'd like to read this but i'm gonna let you guys read it because you can read faster than i can talk i'm hoping there's a bunch of students out there and professors that have students under you that will be allowing them to look at something that's not not sexy but very very practical and and there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about and uh, and and the i'm going to talk about the betts law the wind turbine this Wise technology, that's my term. It, I came up with that. No university is, is doing that. I'm trying to explain a phenomenon that nobody's really looked at. And somebody smart, it isn't going to be me, is going to come up with actually the, the, the mathematical formula for how this works. Uh, but it is, it is quite amazing how that flow and it makes sense. It makes very scientific sense that up the, the flow at the surface, the interface of, of the air has much less friction. So it wants to go way farther out than the stuff coming back in because that the viscosity of the water and, and the, the boundary effect of, the, of the, the liner and all these things make it so much easier for everything to go away, but not, this, not come back in. So there's, there's a... Somebody's going to have their name on this law, much like Mr. Betts. Who it is, I'll, I'll help you. Again, I'm just not going to read this. I will say, Ohio State's Fred Michael, I've, I've heard him talk. It's, it's pretty knowledgeable. And this is what I took away. It might not be true, but why does poultry stink so bad? Poultry manure? Well, feathers are dead bodies. You know, so that you're smelling decomposing bodies, um, uh, other information there. So our, uh, now here I talk about uh, our equipment. Um, we do now have a BLDC motor, brushless DC motor, although it works on uh, AC uh, 220. Um, it is actually a DC motor. There's a, a driver inside the container. That's all underwater. My motor is underwater. 
So you see absolutely nothing of, of the workings under there. And that's by design to keep the, the solids from messing with a propeller. Uh, you saw the previous things where they have the shaft and, and the propeller and anything going past that propeller wraps on the shaft. And, and now you have to take it off. And, and after the 40th or 50th or 100th time, say, screw that. Um, with a motor and nothing after the propeller, there's really nothing to catch on except for the, the framework of my equipment. And that really doesn't affect the operation of the, 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 the propeller. Uh, struvite. Um, people my age, which aren't in... in universities anymore, they're retired. Uh, back in the 70s, this type of aeration was being studied, but with the low feed prices and, and everything else happening, uh, they went to uh, uh, the, the underground, under basement pit storage for, for hogs. And uh, uh, the, the struvite was also a problem. Struvite forms in turbulent areas. So uh, elbows, uh, valves, uh, veins of, of uh, uh, pumps, it, it's, it's a pain in the butt. But it, struvite is an also an opportunity that a lot of people are thinking about um, how can we harvest phosphorus? And that's just a, a, a huge opportunity uh, because we can make struvite. Uh, and I don't know the dynamics, but this type of aeration uh, becomes a, a problem with it. My answer to that is you simply have to be smarter than the screw bite. So I'm going to blast through and see we're, we're hiding some, some part of the slide there. It's sad. You can't read it and I can't read it either. So um, updated information. Um, I guess the, the biggest thing that is most important in my presentation, besides the odor control that aeration can do, which Nobody seems to be very excited about, which boggles my mind, but two main problems, odor with manure and manure runoff. So the effluent, the solids of this stuff after aeration, the texture of the solids remaining uh, are phenomenally different. One, they can, if you add water into that, uh, that the, 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 the manure in its 100% concentration is holding as much suspended solids as it can, okay? And we're stirring it up and, and we're trying to carry more, okay? So you send that out to the, 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 the pond, we need a treatment volume in there at all times, so please don't empty your pond. But as soon as you dump that out and you add fresh water, now that fresh water has a carrying capacity to add, get some of those solids out again. So you're, it's like you've got a brand new batch of brand new manure that you can send through pivots. So, so that's one thing. The other thing, if you are knifing that in and you just agitate that and, and you start knifing it in, that effluent is dramatically different than raw manure. And uh, discussion with some of the other people say that it's because of the colloids are broken down. Uh, a cow poops there and that it's a pie, okay? It's not necessarily the solids that's holding it together because it would be splat. It would be like a, a, a cookie, okay? It's not, it's standing up. And that's because of the colloidal stuff. That raw manure going into um, soil, and with the colloidal stuff still holding it on, and I'm gonna put numbers here, uh, knifing in uh, uh, dairy manure is around 13,000 gallons per acre. You do the math, that's about a third of a gallon of manure per square foot. Now you put a third of a gallon of milk jug and a square foot, and you go, holy crap. That's a lot of, lot of manure, yet 94% of it is, is water. You would think that should just go right into the soil. It doesn't because of the colloids in raw manure. Aeration, our aeration destroys those colloids and that 
trench, after the, it's been knifed in, that trench is pretty much dry. You can walk out there and not step into a trench uh, four to six hours. Whereas raw manure, you don't want to be out there for five or six days. So if you're really concerned about eliminating manure runoff, uh, aeration really sets up the, the manure effluent to be absorbed into the soil almost immediately. I got one more sheet after this. Read fast. <laughs> and I do have some sites in town or in, in the state here. Uh, and I'd be happy to work with any kind of researcher that wants to put our equipment on any ponds that they have that they want to be looking at, and I'll coach you on what other things I've learned. So I'd be, I'm very excited about bringing the practical sister to the forefront here. Any questions? So what's the time frame that this takes to sort of work? Thank you. Thank you. Um, from the time frame of installing equipment to actually seeing results that you can go, holy shit, this really is working, is uh, about two months I can demonstrate that there, there's activity that's phenomenally different. And, and third month on a well-designed system, you should, you should be seeing results that say, yeah, I can buy that. 